who any second now will come bounding from backstage onto the Comic-Con Hall H stage. Alfonso Cuaron, Children of Men! Oh, that's okay. Oh, they probably wouldn't let you in over there. Sorry, you can't get in. Sorry. I'm on the panel. I don't care. You can come in. <laughs> They're tough. They're tough. Um, but they do a good job. All right, so welcome, Alfonso. Thank you. Uh, congratulations. First of all, congratulations to everything. I'm such a huge fan of your work. Your films are beautiful. And, uh, uh, and, and, and this, I don't know if a lot, I mean, I know you've released, there's been a teaser trailer that's been online, but can you just give people a little idea of what this story is from your point of view? Well, the story is, is about two astronauts stranded on, in space. And uh, there's only two, all the way through the film, you only see those two faces. There's no other cast. There's only uh, Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. And, uh, yeah, they're pretty good, no? And, uh, yeah, it was great. And uh, if I was going to be stranded in space, I wouldn't mind being stranded with them. Uh, yeah, but the, the, uh, it's a film that is a non-stop ride. I mean, it's, it's something that is a very, it's a very intense film. Uh, it's a very immersive experience. You're with the characters. You, the whole idea, we wanted people to feel that they are floating in space. And uh, through that, we play different themes and different uh, issues but never stopping the action. The action is just ongoing. Yeah. Do you have something, you brought something that you can show everyone? To sort of illustrate? Well, yeah, you guys are going to see uh, for the first time. One, uh, yeah, one, one scene is very cool because if you saw the trailer or the teaser, the thing is I am very happy with that teaser. There's only a couple of things. Okay. In a trailer, a teaser, they're, you know, they, they, they want to make exciting, so they put, for instance, explosions. Uh, as we know, there's no sound in space. The film, we don't do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah but uh, okay. and, uh, and the other thing is because being a, a, a trailer that we wanted to convey different moments of the thing, you don't have the sense of what the film is. Is that it's a film that is composed by mostly very extended takes. So uh, here you're going to have an example. You're going to see one one continuous scene, and then we're going to have little moments. You know, so you have the sense of other moments of the thing. Most of those moments are also composed of of extended things. Okay, great. Oh, awesome. Okay, so we have uh, never before seen footage from Gravity. Alfonso Cuarón, uh, please roll it. And it's Dr. Ryan Stone. Sandra Bullock. Comic-Con before? Never. This is your first time? I, but I, I do have to say that um, this was uh, my sister and her husband's first weekend date was to Comic-Con and they are now in the audience reliving after all those years of marriage their first sleepaway date. Oh! Yeah. That's adorable! Isn't that sweet? Have you seen any of the con yet or did you just say basically they kind of have to swoop you in? They got, kind of had to work today but I'm yeah. looking forward to see the con later on. You can put a mask on and just float through. I'm gonna work this mask. You're <laughs> Good Sandra Bullock cosplay. Thanks. Hey, all right. uh, the dress may be a bit of a problem. Good dress. Well, you know, if it gets me free stuff, I'll, I'll wear whatever I need to. Yeah, yeah. Good. Um, this this movie looks incredible because it's there's a it's definitely terrifying. But it feels like it's, you know, it's just you and George Clooney and it's really all about the performances of you against each other. Was any of that scary knowing that you're coming into the movie where it was the performances were going to have to drive it? Uh, it, it should have been scary. I think what was scarier was the fact that um, these men created something that it, A, had never been done before. The technology basically was being created on the spot. Not on the spot, it had taken years to get us, you know, to, to where we, once we had humans stepped into whatever they created, they didn't know if it was going to work or not. 
Um, and all these pieces were mathematically and systematically put together. There was no improvising. This was the brainchild of, of, of all these amazing people working together. So that was more daunting to me because you didn't want to let them down because they'd worked so long. Um, I should have thought uh, about the fact that it was just me and George, but you didn't because it was just the physical aspect of it was so scary that you just wanted to, to step up to, to their game. So, uh, by the way, uh, start lining up for questions because we're going to have some time for Q and A uh, in a few minutes. But what was what was the workday like for you on this movie? Was it basically just like get into the suit and then you're in it for like 15 hours? I, I think that's a great question for Alfonso to answer because he was like the, the evil puppeteer who masterminded the whole thing. <laughs> what was it like? <laughs> <laughs> well, the. Um... It was it was it was a very intense experience for Sandra. I have to admit, um, the film is about Brian Stone being insulated in space, and for as a big coincidence, the technology that required we we created to make the film uh, required for her to be insulated. For a long time, she was in a cube that is nine by nine of LED lights in which uh, she would be in one, in, in, one, uh, in, in one rig in the center of that cube. Outside there were robots that were holding the camera. Some, in some instances a robot that was holding uh, uh, the light. And this is a uh, robot, we're talking about the manufacturing, the, the, the car manufacturing robots. Uh -huh. And then if you walk into the set you will see that strange cube that looked very beautiful at the end of the stage and it was rows and rows and rows and rows of computers and and a, a bunch of very wise geeks doing a lot of work and uh, but the truth of the matter is that Sandra was completely insulated in that cube and it took so it, it took a while to for her to get into the rig so Sandra chose in that in between the takes she would stay there and she would stay there just in her zone with her music uh, because something was very clear is that, as Sandra said, it was very mathematical, uh, but our focus was not the technology, our focus was her, the performance, it was the emotional journey and how that was going to be translated. Yeah. Uh, what, what were some of the challenges as a producer when you, when you were putting this film together? You're like, well, they're trapped in space, and they're like, and? And you're like, no, it's going to be awesome. Like, how do, you, how, do you, how do you sell that? How do you make that work? Well, one of the things that you know, we're talking about is this ro amazing robot that, that, that was invented, um, on, at the end of which was the camera, because we never wanted to show gravity. They were in space, uh, Sandra and George were in space, and you didn't want, if, if they were upside down, you didn't want the face doing this and the face doing that want any sense of gravity so the camera would would rotate around and it was motoring down this track at around 20 25 miles an hour and would stop on a dime when Sandra said was she ever you asked whether she was scared what she was I imagine most scared of was this camera racing towards her and stopping literally inch an inch from her nose so she couldn't lean too far forward she had to go right back and it was I imagine quite Iris was the name of the robot. Yeah. What, what Alfonso forgot to mention was, you know, in within that cube, it wasn't like I was standing in a cube just, you know, pacing. They had me locked in this grid where you had to crawl through it, locked into your waist, and kept your feet tight next to each other so it could oscillate. And but if that robot did decide to continue through my face, uh, I couldn't get out of its way. So that I forgot to mention. <laughs> um, I mean, there was a guy with that red button. <laughs> we did the problem is we never told Sandy is that by the time you push that button, <laughs> it, it would be too late. <laughs> so, Sandy, did we tell you that this was how it was going to work? No, you were no up? one, no one told me anything. Yeah. Were you able to use any? I mean, are you are you claustrophobic at all? Did it yes. feel? Yeah. I am claustrophobic. So what? When did you know what you were getting into when you signed up for the movie? Well, it, here's the silver lining. Alfonso said when we first met, he said the only way that we're really going to be able to shoot zero gravity and you in zero gravity is if we do what's called the vomit comet, which oh, is, yeah. I, I, if you guys don't know, it's this massive plane that falls out of the sky for 30 seconds, gives you weightlessness, and travels back up and keeps falling. So I'm definitely afraid of flying. But I said, if I'm going to shake hands with the fear, this is the way to do it with Alfonso, and I, I, I you know, I'll just have to suck it up, and 
this is going to be an amazing life experience. <laughs> well, they didn't tell me that we weren't going to do it till two weeks before shooting when George just happened to mention it. And I was like, what? <laughs> There's no public comment. So anything at, they would ask me to do after that, I couldn't care less what it was. They had me strung up from 12 wires for eight, nine hours a day. Just would leave me hanging up there. I didn't care. It wasn't in the vomit comment, and I, I would have done it. <laughs> well, that, that just shows the work of a Machiavellian producer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So were you able to use some of that to, for, for, for the role, actually, like suppressing the terror, or was that real? It wasn't so much terror as it just was, just zoning out, and, and if you were in pain, don't, you know, either use it, or just, I learned how to meditate up there. We had, I had a great relationship with our, our, sound, our sound guy, and that um, Alfonso gave me boxes of CDs with sounds, and pieces of noises that felt like something and we just sort of made a catalog for each scene you know how does this make you feel maybe play track five if I'm not getting to where we need to go so anytime I was in a place I would just he would just play music for me that sort of but yeah because the communication with Sandra was she was literally in that queue and she had her her uh, her cap with uh, and so the communication would be through her earphones and um, uh, so everything was through radio, so she was insulated, and she would be playing music while he was, well, well she was, but most of the time when you, you were performing, you would like to have certain moods and sounds. Sound. It's almost like you know, they were able to create a soundtrack from like how you hear it here, all the sounds and the um, they were able to create that for you while you were doing the scene, so you could feel something outside of just extreme loneliness in this cube. Um, and it gave you like the sense that you might be in space, or it, it, it did me. The whole time up there, it's like, I'm gonna do a comedy next time. I think I'm just gonna do a comedy. I think I'm just gonna. <laughs> That's what I did right after. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have time for uh, a few questions. Uh, if you guys want to turn up the spotlight and, and line up, uh, questions for David or Sandra or uh, Alfonso. No. <laughs> Hello. This question is for Sandra Bullock. <laughs> Not the voice I expected. I gotta be honest. Yeah. It's a really sexy voice. It's though. nice. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, Sandra, I know that uh, with your training for her, you look good in red, by the way. So. <laughs> As do you in black. <laughs> Anywhere else, if someone in a mask says that to you, run. <laughs> that's the voice that's keeping me here. <laughs> that's the voice. Well, yes, sir. Uh, training for gravity, I know your body might have gone under a lot of pressure. Can you tell me, what was your daily workout regimen to prepare for that? Um, given that I didn't know what to, to expect, it sounded very Cirque du Soleil and gymnastics to me. And also, you had to have, I mean, I was a dancer all my life, so I went, wow, finally a few trades that I had a, a knowledge of, like gymnastics and, and dance and music. I just wanted my body to get to a, a place where my core could accomplish anything that they wanted me to on the 12 wire system. and. and so we, tra we trained every single day for six months before shooting, and then every single day while shooting. And then I wanted the look of her to be um, almost as androgynous as I could get her, because she, um, in the story, had experienced such a great loss in life that she just stopped allowing anything that reminded her um, of what she was, which was a mother and a woman. Um, so I wanted the body to reflect someone who didn't want to be reminded anymore of, of what she lost. So it was just, a, it was basically a robot, as much as I could get it to that point and still be healthy and functioning. So it was the core workout to be agile and, and balletic and, and limber enough, and then um, the, the outside look of it that I wanted to accomplish. So it was every day, every single day. Thank you for your Thank question. You. Thank you. What is your name, sir? <laughs> what is your question? <laughs> Hi, my name is Richie, fellow G4 guy. Nice. Um, Children of Men is one of the best, is the best movie in my opinion. <laughs> Academy Award all around. But my question is, obviously there's a lot of stuff you're trying for in this movie, and you had to create a bunch of rigs. Was there ever a point where the studio is looking at you and please, and they're like, please, don't break Sandra's face. Maybe we could do this another way? I think don't break Sandra's face is implied. <laughs> yeah, well, there's always a process to that when you're making a film. There's, a, for, so, they, there's always the, easy, the suggestion of the easy way. But it's not fun. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, there, was a, there were a lot of suggestions. But at the end of the day, I have to say that 
they were really fully behind the film. Uh, uh, from, from every standpoint, actually, part of the of, of someone who pushed to, to develop technologies was uh, it's called Chris DeFaria, who, 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 who is an executive at Warner's and uh, who's very into CGs and stuff, and, 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 and he was a, a, a big supporter of the whole thing. So the studio, I, I have to say, is one of those, the, the, those uh, stories in which they were really, really supportive and, and they were really behind. Now, I'm not going to say that they, they, they didn't suggest for easy, easy work, easier ways to do things. Was there ever a moment bicycle? Was it the bicycle? Was it the bicycle chair? Wasn't that one of the suggestions? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They suggested that? No, no, at some point they said, no, but why are you doing all of that? Why don't you put it in, a, in an office chair with some dude running around with a lamp? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay, let's do a test. That was actually Chris before he actually... Yeah, actually, that was Chris, just as we heard. Yeah, after pricing Chris, that was Chris. <laughs> yeah. And then he said, okay, yeah, that may not be a good idea. So, and then, but then he started saying, well, okay, well, uh, he, I think he's the one who put us in touch with the Rob. He was the PTI. Yeah, he, he, uh, so he went from office chair to, to robots. At that point, you just hand them a copy of the show to a man and go, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Good. No, the truth of the matter no, is, is that, in order to do those films, is that, truth of the matter, you don't know what you're doing. And that's the point of making those films. And actually, it's one of the most exciting things about working with him, is he's a madman. And he really knows no fear, and put, is someone who pushes the envelope, and is always, never settles for anything, and sometimes it's pain in the arse, but it's the best pain in the arse, because he will not stop. Nothing, nothing, yeah, maybe I should rephrase that. He's <laughs> <laughs> uh, the best kind of pain in the ass. I'll stop right there. This level yeah, of dickhead yeah, over yeah, here yeah. is the best. But he, he just, he never settles, he's always pushing the limit. What, this, the thing that excites me the most about this movie, besides you guys being involved in it, is it, it feels like that kind of... There's a type of film in the 70s that I loved, where there, it was like space terror, there was something going on, there was isolation, like a silent running or something. Like, wh where did you draw inspiration for this? A, a lot of, it, it had to do a lot with some of those films, and, uh, but it's, I mean, it's, it's a big repertoire. I mean, it goes from obs more obscure films uh, like Dead Man Escapes, Bresson, a French movie in the, in the, in the 40s, uh, uh, early 50s, I think, and uh, to Duel, Spielberg. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's Spielberg. That, 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 that may be Spielberg's best. And he has another great film, that's amazing. Uh, the um, eh, other films like. You know, there's obviously Vanishing Point, talking about those films in the 70s, and Runaway Train. You know, uh, but, but together with that, uh, what we wanted to do is, 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 is a film that was an emotional journey. So as much as it's exciting, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a truly emotional journey of Ryan Stone's character. Excellent. I think we have time for one more question. What is your name and question, sir? Uh, I'm Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Don't be nervous, you adorable little monkey. Sorry. And, uh, I, wanna hug you. I just wanted to say that uh, I consider uh, you, Alfonso, as a uh, master of your craft and um, truly an inspiration. To, uh, but, but I want to be a future director. So, uh, I, my question to you is, um, uh, in Children of Men, well, we saw the long sequences of action and that would stretch along, like stretch along really long periods of time, like uh, Alfred Hitchcock and wrote. I just wanted to know how difficult was it for you to execute and block these um, very long sequences of action like we saw. That was one take. I just wanted to know uh, how difficult it is for uh, to do that. It's not difficult for me. It's difficult for everybody around me. <laughs> And that's true of the matter. And, and, and the thing is, when you do this kind of, 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 of takes, when you do this kind of like, stuff like here, it's just, you just depend on a lot of great people. And uh, the first thing I have to say is, is, is uh, because you can do a lot of technical things and beautiful camera moves, but it doesn't have a meaning. It doesn't work for anything. And 
that the point of departure is the screenplay, and as important is the work with the actors. Because when you do those takes at the end, all the weight is on the actors. You can, you know, you can, you can do a lot of stuff around them, but if, if it's not truthful what's going on there, it's not going to work. So I, I find that the most demanding thing and more difficult thing is trying to sort out, and that's something that with Sandra we will be, and she, speaking of pain in the ass, uh, uh, she would be about having, ha, go, going through every single bit to have an, a, a clarity of what is exactly what we're trying to convey. And I'm very grateful for that, because uh, uh, otherwise, as much a spectacle as you can have, there is not uh, the most important, that is the emotional, the, the emotional core. But at the end, it's collaboration. You know, it's, 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 and if you're starting to make films, that's what you're going to learn, that you're only as good as your collaborators. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much for your question, and good luck, man. Good luck. Who can be up here for the right? You can be up here. Please uh, keep your applause going. I would like to thank our panel, Alfonso Cuaron. All right, Gravity! The director, the producer, and half of the cast of Gravity. <laughs> uh,